guys, we are going to be making something tasty today using the IOD fusion cookie technique. We are going to be making beautiful decorated sugar cookies. Wait until you guys see how easy this is. Okay, before we get started, it is important that you use a cookie dough that is specifically made for these type of techniques. So like a cookie decorator type of dough. It's going to have really good structure, it's going to hold its shape, it's not going to spread, and it's, the, the, it's going to be the type of recipe that cookie makers that decorate cookies love. Mm -hmm. And it's actually really delicious. And it is very delicious. I have tried it. Yes, in fact, we're gonna share that recipe uh, and where it came from in, in the description. Description. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're using these little spacers, super basic, simple trick. You can also get rings for your rolling pin and that's going to give you a perfectly even rollout. Starting with a chilled disc. That's a really cool tip because I did not know that and I have always been going like this mm -hmm. and like this around my dough. Exactly. So we're going to target a size that's going to give us enough space to fit the whole mold on it for this technique. Okay. And you're going to roll from the center out. Oh yeah, that's plenty big. And it's, this is just parchment? This is just parchment. It really, parchment is a tool that you, it helps you handle your dough without having to handle the dough itself. So, and you don't want to, if you've got, if you're working with a dough that is optimum in its chilled state, you don't want to be warming it up with your hands. Mm. Okay, let's take a double. Oh, perfect, and I think we've got it all pulled out and even, fabulous. So this is where the micro room comes in handy and just shines. It's going to create a template for us to then hand cut these shapes out. You are going to set it down without any shift and get it settled into that dough. And then you'll use your rolling pin to gently, not too much pressure because you don't want to spread the dough out. Right, you're just getting that micro room really um, down into the dough. Okay. Perfect. Fabulous. Now we are going to set this on a cookie sheet and we are going to pop it into the freezer or the fridge. What you're going for is you want it nice and cold and firm, but you don't want it hard. Um, for the next step. So, so about how long would you say? 10 minutes? Well, if it's going to be in the freezer, 10 minutes tops. Okay. Um, in the fridge, you would go 10 minutes and you'd be fine. Okay. Let's go ahead and chill this. Okay. Now's the fun part of cutting out your templated cookies. I'm actually going to use a safety pin, washed of course. And the reason why I like it is it's easier for me to stay on the curves, as well as the fact that the bend and the loop helps it so that's not spinning in my fingers. So, <laughs> so you wanna do this one? Sure. So you can see that she's getting right on the seam. If anything, you don't want to be on the outside of the seam because you want to have that nice and tight. You also wanna keep your pin or whatever cutting device you're using straight up and down, perpendicular to your surface. If it's getting side to side, you're gonna either have an undercut or a bevel on your cookie. Now, one of the fun parts. We are going to take these chocolate style melts in white and melt them. And we're just gonna use the microwave. We're gonna use the microwave, we're following the instructions. I like to check it at, depending on your microwave, um, how hot it gets, at about 30 seconds and 30 second intervals and give them a stir. that's nice. You want to make sure it's super silky smooth, no lumps. Those little lumps will cause problems. So, oh, that's fabulous. Let's go ahead and put it in this piping bag. 
and I like to just take it and use a glass or a jar to support it and hold it nice open. And firm. Yeah. Okay. How about if I start this and then so I'll do some of them and then you do some of them? Sure. Okay. Oopsie, oopsie. Hold on. Okay. Oops. <laughs> I'm so messy. So now what we're gonna do is let that get down to the bottom of your bag. I like to just make a simple twist. Okay. And then with this up so it doesn't squirt out all over, I'm going to open a little hole and how big that hole is depends on what you're doing. In this case, I don't want it to come out too slowly. Like you would do it smaller if you were piping a royal icing, for example. And I notice you're just pinching the end there until you're ready. That's yes. probably important. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and fill it. And I, my goal is to have it all the way level um, without going outside of it. Oh, that looks fun. It is fun. It's as fun as it looks. It's super fun. Will you let me do a couple? Oh, maybe. <laughs> so once you get it, like that, uh, about like this. Can you hold this for a second? And you'll do this uh, a few times as you go. You're going to pick it up and drop it. And you're gonna do that a few times. We'll do it again after you get yours filled. And I'm gonna add a little bit more than that. And what that accomplishes is two things. It brings bubbles to the surface so that they're not on the face of your design, but it also causes that molten chocolate to really um, get all compact into those details. And you don't need to put anything in the cavity before you put the chocolate in. No, you don't. Nice. Now you wanna see how I'm doing this. If you get sloppy, you can slop it out. So, yeah. But that's where I want these to be filled. Typically, you're not mm -hmm. gonna fill them. This would be considered overfilled. Okay. But because of our technique, we wanna make sure that it's at least to the surface and just a little mm. bit proud of level. Okay. So go ahead and give it a try. It's fun. It makes it much easier again with our micro rib to yeah. do this. Oh, that is fun, isn't it? Yes. Is that about good? Yeah. Okay. Here, let's go ahead and do the settle on it, each one, so it doesn't start to firm up in that cavity. Oh, okay. is the fun We part. keep saying that. Every step must be really fun. It is fun. super fun. <laughs> you guys are gonna love doing this. It is as easy as it looks, too. Okay, this is so fun. We are going to take our cooled cookies, we are going to match it to the corresponding cavity on our IOD mold, and we're going to nestle it in there, making sure that it's all properly aligned. This is the fusion part of the, the fusion, fusion part. cookie technique. Yes. So I'm gonna make sure I've got my, oh, that's not right. There we go. No. It's oh, upside down. It's upside down. <laughs> face down, folks, face down. <laughs> I'm like, that's not right, that's not. Okay, so on? we are going to set it right in there, okay? Then we're going to nestle it and just really kind of almost shimmy it, making mm -hmm. sure that you're getting really good contact, uh, contact, and then you'll get some overflow and that's totally okay. In fact, that's a good thing. All right. Do, one, do this one here. Shimmy it down in there. What's so nice about this technique is 
the chocolate is supporting the cookie. So by the time you've got these fused together, you've got a nice sturdy mm -hmm. uh, decorative cookie. Now, Sally, why don't you try one? Okay. And then there's another fun little technique that you can kind of riff on. Okay, here's a fun little spin-off. If you take a cotton cord, or you can get the um, lolly sticks that are in a loop, um, but I feel like the cotton cord is going to work easier in this mm -hmm. case because it's so bendy. pliable. Right. And we are going to put it in the chocolate, choosing a space that it can um, go across without getting into the chocolate. And then we are going to fuse it with that in between. How fun. Isn't so it it's fun? like a little ornament? Yes. Now we're using a pure organic cotton cord, so you don't have to worry about any kind of funky stuff in your food. Yes. Okay. okay. Isn't that fun? It is. Okay, let's get on with it. <laughs> Now, from here, you could just let these set just like this and then go back in and clip and shave your edges off. But we're gonna do a little bit of that work right now while the chocolate is still warm and just get it away from the seam and kind of draw it up onto the sidewall of the cookie, which is kind of a fun way to have a nice finished edge. But the main purpose of doing this is that you're not going to have a lot of excess to trim off. So we've had this in the freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes and you can really see that it's set and chilled. You can feel that it's really cold and firm. So as you're taking them out, you want to be really careful and just slowly around the edges, just kind of, you'll see that it's starting to just, seal. yeah, you can hear that little pop and just ever so gently around the edges first, pop that seal. You want to avoid putting tension or pressure or torque on the cookie itself mm -hmm. and keep that on the mold. It really is so fun. You can feel the cookie release. Oh. oh my goodness. Look at that. That is so beautiful. So pretty. Okay. Look at that beautiful edge. Yes. And the fact that you didn't have to get in there and put icing between. So you save a whole step. Isn't that lovely? So pretty. Mm. You could also go an extra step and just hand paint these with a little food color wash. Mm -hmm. Would it work? I saw somebody once put a little um, shimmer dust in the in a cavity. I don't see why not. I would like to try that. The food safe type of food sh safe <laughs> shimmer. shimmer dust, of course. <laughs> Always have to specify. You just never know what people are going to try. There we go. Mm. Oh so my goodness, gorgeous. you guys, these are so pretty. And the thing about the white chocolate style melts is it's yummier than some like yeah. that are pure sugar um, yeah. type icings. Yeah, it really is. Okay, I'm Let's gonna grab a little. It's turned out. Okay, so that. Let's use a. I think. Okay. You're fine to do that. Perfect. Um, and, and then a little, a little tool ornament. to Experiment. trim off the excess. Isn't that fun? Hold up. Well, we'll decorate it first because then with the little cello bag and a ribbon. So pretty. Oh, so fun. Okay. So you'll notice that some of the cookies will have some excess. Some because of the technique that we used earlier were cleaner, but you'll still have a little bit of overbleed. So Josie's going to use a sharp tool to just scrape off the excess. Notice that Josie's holding the side, which is the cookie part. She keeps her hands off of 
the chocolate because it will easily melt with the heat of your fingers. Okay, so this is a fun use of our fused white chocolate sugar cookies. A little hostess gift for hanging on a Christmas tree. It's like soap on a rope, but it's cookie on a rope. Yes. So we are going to use a standard little cellophane gift bag and cut it about the same length as where the loop ends because that gives a little cinch space. Okay. Who wouldn't love to get a little cookie as a gift? Mm. It would make my day. And these are delicious. I have tried this recipe. Mm -hmm. It is so yummy. It is. It's kind of like between candy and cookie. Yeah, which that's seems true. Good. <laughs> which seems like a really, really good, good thing. <laughs> exactly. Combination. Good. Tie that nice and tight, and then make a pretty little bow. Oh, this is pretty ribbon. Velvet. Mm-hmm. It's like a cotton velvet. Mm -hmm. I awesome. love that. Isn't that a such a pretty little gift for hostess or bestie? Or... I would like it. Yeah. If any of you are listening and thinking of a gift for me, I like it. <laughs> All right, you guys, you can see how fun and easy it is to get beautiful dimension on your cookies with IOD molds. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to see more videos on how you can use your IOD products for the sugar arts. Bye, you guys. So we've had this in the free. <laughs> okay, that's the only time I'm gonna do that. Done. Okay, out of my system.